Hello everybody, this is Dr. Pasha from the Pasha Snoring Sinus Center in Houston, Texas. And today we're gonna to talk about the top 10 things you know about balloon sinuplasty. Balloon sinuplasty has become more and more popular for patients that have chronic sinus or recurrent sinus disease. And it's a fantastic procedure when done properly under the right patients and the right indications. But before considering balloon sinuplasties, there's a number of things you should know. Number one is indications. Now indications is already controversial because we really don't have a standard of care, although insurance companies may require certain things. But for the most part, the main indication is failed medical management, which means that you've tried nasal sprays in the past, antibiotics, allergy management, antihistamines over and over again, and you still have problems. So, these may change depending on who you talk to and it may change depending on your insurance carrier, but basically you've tried medications and you still have problems. Number two is understanding the difference between doing balloon sinuplasty in the office versus undergoing a traditional sinus operation. Now let me give you a little secret about balloon sinuplasty. Physicians actually get paid more in the office than they actually do in the operating room. So it's important that you understand the difference. There are several things that you can accomplish in the operating room that you can't accomplish in the office. The main reason is addressing the septum, especially if you have a, what's called a deviated nasal septum. The septum is the wall that divides the left and right side of the nose. If you have a deviation between the left and the right side, then you can have a blockage in one side of your nose. Sometimes you can address the septum in the office if it's not that bad. But for major cases and significant septal deflections, you're gonna have that done in the operating room while you're asleep. Another reason why you may not consider doing an office balloon is if your sinuses are really, really bad and you have nasal polyps or fungal infections or these little cysts called mucociles. Make sure you talk to your physician and discuss both options before you commit to an in-office balloon sinuplasty. Number three, qualifications. It is very important that when choosing your surgeon to make sure that they're board certified in ear, nose, and throat, head, and neck surgery, or the fancy word is otolaryngology. Most seasoned surgeons have done hundreds, if not thousands, of balloon sinuplasties. Number four is understanding your risk. For the most part, balloon sinuplasty is exceedingly safe. It is a lot safer than taking a patient to the operating room. But there are at least a couple things you should consider. One is that you can have failure. And if that occurs, we may have to take you back to the operating room for a second procedure. The other, although rare, is bleeding. And if you have a bleed, for most part, it can be taken care of pretty quickly in the office. Number five is make sure your treatment plan is comprehensive. Now, balloon sinuplasty is very, very effective, but most patients with chronic sinus disease is because of multiple issues. So addressing the sinuses may not necessarily address other problems, including allergy problems, you may have an immune deficiency, or other structural issues. It's important that your doctor is very comprehensive so that you can be successful. Number six is to avoid what I call balloon sinuplasty factories. Now, as I mentioned earlier, balloon sinuplasty is high reimbursement procedure. And what you wanna do is avoid high marketing places that just churn out balloon sinuplasty after balloon sinuplasty and may not necessarily have your best interest in mind. Remember, balloon sinuplasty is a fantastic procedure if you qualify and you don't want your doctor to crowbar your indications just so they can get a higher reimbursement. Number seven is seek a second opinion. As I mentioned earlier, balloon sinuplasty indications are already a little controversial. So it wouldn't hurt to consult with another doctor just to make sure you're making the right decision. Number eight is don't forget about the rest of the nose. Now balloon sinuplasty is good at addressing the sinuses, but it's also important to look at the rest of the nose. And while you're undergoing that procedure, you can also get other things done, including reducing the turbinates, which are those fleshy shelves that are inside your nose that congest and decongest whenever you have allergies. Other things to consider, are septal spurs, which is the wall that divides the left and right side of your nose, or even polyps that can be easily taken out in the office. Number nine is understand which sinuses are gonna be addressed. Now, balloon sinuplasty can address the sinuses in your cheeks, called the maxillary sinuses, your forehead, 
which is called the frontal sinuses, and the sinuses in the back of your nose called the sphenoid sinus. It's important that you discuss with your surgeons which sinuses are infected. Number 10, anesthesia. Now, for most patients, you can undergo balloon sinuplasty very easily and it's very well tolerated with just a local anesthetic. Now, some clinics are offering general anesthesia in the office. My only caution is that sometimes you may want to consider just doing that in the operating room under much more ideal conditions. Thank you everyone for watching my videos. I hope this was useful. Our goal is to educate you so that you can be empowered in making your own medical decisions. If you want to learn more about balloon sinuplasty, just click on the links below. I have several videos that cover the basics of balloon sinuplasty.